Hey students, welcome to the chapter four review for The Great Gatsby. Again, I've gotten all these summaries from Sparknotes, which you may have heard of, um, and I've just kind of put them in a narrative form to review with you, and I added my own commentary. And also, if you go to the notes versions, the presentation slides, you can have access to these links that take you to the movie scenes uh, for the scenes that we're discussing. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so chapter four. Nick lists all of the people who attended Gatsby's parties that summer, a roll call of the nation's most wealthy and powerful people. He then describes a trip that he took to New York with Gatsby to eat lunch. As they drive to the city, Gatsby tells Nick about his past, but his stories seem highly improbable. He claims, for instance, to be the son of wealthy deceased parents from the Midwest. When Nick asks which Midwestern city he's from, Gatsby replies, San Francisco. That's a problem. San Francisco is a city in California, so it's a West Coast city. So Nick catches Gatsby in a lie here, where Gatsby can't even accurately name a Midwestern city. Gatsby then lists a long and preposterously, or that means ridiculously, ridiculous, ridiculous, ridiculously, a um, detailed set of accomplishments. He claims to have been educated at Oxford, to have collected jewels in the capitals of Europe, to have hunted big game, and to have been awarded medals in World War I by multiple European countries. Seeing Nick's skepticism, Gatsby produces a medal for Montenegro and a picture of himself playing cricket at Oxford. And so, what various facts does Gatsby claim is all true about himself? So Gatsby claims that he was educated at Oxford, that he collected jewels from the capitals of Europe, that he hunted big game, and that he was awarded medals in World War I by multiple European countries. And so that is a pretty extreme list of accomplishments for someone to have accomplished in one lifetime. And so Nick is understandably skeptical. Um, however, Gatsby offers some forms of proof. He shows a picture of himself playing cricket at Oxford, and he also shows Nick a purple heart that he was awarded in World War I. And so Nick, he has some reasons to possibly believe Gatsby. We also kind of sense that Nick wants to believe Gatsby, um, but Nick also has to admit that some of it just seems really far-fetched. And so chapter four is going towards further characterizing Gatsby as this mysterious character who seems to be surrounded by gossip and lies and who we don't really fully know who he is. And in this image, I do want to point out is Gatsby's car. It is the yellow Rolls Royce, um, which was a very fancy car in the 1920s. And this is a very important symbol in the novel. So consider the fact that it's yellow and what that might symbolically mean, um, especially in this scene, and also in later scenes, the yellow car is going to be a very important symbol in the novel. So Gatsby's yellow car speeds through the Valley of Ashes and enters the city. When a policeman pulls Gatsby over for speeding, Gatsby shows him a white card and the policeman apologizes for bothering him. And so this is actually the second scene that we've seen with reckless driving. In chapter three, Owl Eyes uh, tries to drive drunk and he crashes his car in a ditch and it flips over. And then here again, we see Gatsby driving very recklessly um, and he gets pulled over by a police officer. So we see this growing theme of kind of like reckless driving um, and it's an important theme. Um, it foreshadows. Um, kind of the dangers of the time um, and the recklessness of the time. And so that's interesting. And the police officer pulls Gatsby over. However, Gatsby shows the police officer this white card. White sim has symbolic meaning. Think about what symbolically you said white meant in earlier chapters and how it might apply here and possibly develop the color symbolism even further. So Gatsby shows the police officer the card and the police officer is like, oh, I'm so sorry. He apologizes to Gatsby and then lets Gatsby go. So that's their trip into town. All right. So in the city, Gatsby takes Nick to lunch and introduces him to Meyer Wolfsheim, who he claims was responsible for fixing the 1919 World Series. 
Wilsheim is a shady character with underground business connections. He gives Nick the impression that the source of Gatsby's wealth might be unsavory, and that Gatsby may even have ties to the sort of organized crime with which Wilsheim is associated. And so why does Wilsheim intimidate Nick? So Wilsheim is a gangster. And so he has allegedly fixed the 1919 World Series, which means he paid off one of the teams to lose so that he could make a ton of money off of betting, um, which is very illegal. It's also implied that Wolsheim is a bootlegger. So we've had all these scenes, the apartment party in New York, Gatsby's parties at his house, this scene right here where they're in a speakeasy. And in all these scenes, they're drinking and it's a illegal. Guys, this is the 1920s. This is during Prohibition when alcohol was an illegal substance. And so all this drinking that people are doing, um, they're drinking something illegal. And Wolsheim is a bootlegger, which means that he supplies this alcohol to people. And in this scene, we find out that Gatsby works for him. So we learn that Gatsby is also a bootlegger, that all of this new money that he has has come from illegal sources. Um, and this kind of intimidates Nick. Um, and so when we ask the question, what concerns arise due to Gatsby's friendship with Wilsheim, it's the fact that Nick suspects that Gatsby might be a bootlegger himself. Now, this scene is actually somewhat problematic, if you recall reading it. So Wilsheim is described um, by the shape of his nose and by his greed. And ultimately, you might have picked up on the fact that negative stereotypes of Jewish people are being used to describe Wilsheim. So Wilsheim is Jewish and Fitzgerald portrays him in a very negative light and uses the fact that he's Jewish to further antagonize him with the readers. And so we know this to be anti-Semitism. And Fitzgerald was an anti-Semite. So this is during the 1920s. Anti-Semitism was a huge problem during this time. This precedes World War II. And so anti-Semitism was a big problem in the U.S., in European countries, and especially in New York City, where there was a large Jewish population. And so Fitzgerald himself was an anti-Semite. And so it's one of the flaws in our author, um, a very serious flaw, and we see it in his writing. And so it's very interesting because um, Fitzgerald makes Tom, one of our antagonists, um, racist, which shows that Fitzgerald is taking um, a stance against racism during the time. Um, Fitzgerald is supporting, um, for instance, vaguely, there's a vague mention um, actually in this chapter where there is a white chauffeur um, driving a very wealthy um, African um, or Black American man. And so Fitzgerald is kind of championing championing um, uh, the African American or Black American rise um, in the class system and they're making money. Um, so that's very interesting. However, Fitzgerald then also holds anti-Semitic views, which is problematic. Um, there's also discussion as to whether or not Fitzgerald was homophobic or if he actually supported homosexuality. Uh, people have read into The Great Gatsby and come to both conclusions. And so there's no definitive uh, kind of point of view on how Fitzgerald felt about that. And people have read it both ways in The Great Gatsby. So you'll have to kind of determine your own opinion on how Fitzgerald felt about that. But it is worth a side note um, that Fitzgerald, um, like many of our authors, um, held points of view that we agree with and also held points of view that we disagree with. Um, and we kind of have to contend with that when we read their works. And so Meyer Wilsheim is a very problematic character due to the anti-Semitic um, sentiments that he represents. All right. So after the lunch in New York, Nick sees Jordan Baker, who finally tells him the details of her mysterious conversation with Gatsby at the party. She relates that Gatsby told her that he is in love with Daisy Buchanan. According to Jordan, during the war, before Daisy married Tom, she was a beautiful young girl in Louisville, Kentucky, and all the military officers in town were in love with her. 
Daisy fell in love with Lieutenant J. Gatsby, who was stationed at the base near her home. Though she chose to marry Tom after Gatsby left for the war, Daisy drank herself into numbness the night before her wedding, after she received a letter from Gatsby. Daisy has apparently remained faithful to her husband throughout their marriage, but Tom has not. Jordan adds that Gatsby bought his mansion in West Egg solely to be near Daisy. Nick remembers the night he saw Gatsby stretch his arms out to the water and realizes that the green light he saw was the light at the end of Daisy's dock. According to Jordan, Gatsby has asked her to convince Nick to arrange a reunion between Gatsby and Daisy. Because he's terrified that Daisy will refuse to see him, Gatsby wants Nick to invite Daisy to tea. Without Daisy's knowledge, Gatsby intends to come to the tea at Nick's house as well, surprising her and forcing her to see him. So that private conversation that Jordan had with Gatsby at Gatsby's party, Jordan finally reveals to Nick what it was all about. And so we now realize why Gatsby has been so desperate to impress Nick. He wants to impress Nick because he wants Nick to feel comfortable setting him and Daisy up on a meeting uh, without Daisy's knowledge. So Gatsby wants Nick to think good of him so that he'll be willing to kind of let Gatsby, let, let Gatsby see Daisy. And so this is, this is slightly problematic. Gatsby wants Nick to force Daisy to see him. Um, and we wonder if Nick's going to agree. It's the idea that Daisy is Nick's cousin. Should Nick protect Daisy from this man that he barely knows? Um, Obviously, Gatsby is obsessed with Daisy. He bought a house across the bay so that he could stare at the green light on her dock. Um, he throws parties every weekend in hopes that Daisy will show up. Um, Gatsby loves Daisy very much, but it's almost in an obsessive way. And there is indication that in the past, Daisy loved Gatsby too, but now she's married to another person. However, this person, Tom, is a terrible person and cheating on her. So it's a complex situation. We could see why Nick would have some trouble deciding what to do. Daisy's in an unhappy marriage. Maybe she would be happy to see Gatsby after all this time. Maybe she still even loves him. But that would mean that Nick is then kind of helping Daisy enter into an affair after she's been faithful through her entire marriage. Does he want to kind of aid in that immoral action? Um, and so we can see that this is very complex and we're curious about what is it that Nick's going to do. Um, Nick, who reserves judgment and doesn't judge people for their immorality, has to make a moral decision here himself. Is he going to help Gatsby see Daisy or is he not? And so how do Gatsby and Daisy know one another in the past? So before Gatsby went to war, he met Daisy. They were both very young. He's a little older than her, but they were both quite young. I think she's like, does it say? How old she is she's like 16 or 17 years old i think she might be 17 i can't remember um but uh he i think is in his early 20s she's 17 they fall in love and then he goes off to war she doesn't hear from him while he's at war but then when he gets back she gets a letter from him where he confesses that he still loves her the problem is it's the night before her wedding when she gets the letter. She's about to marry Tom Buchanan um, and she doesn't react well. Um, so why has Gatsby moved to East Egg? He's moved to East Egg because he hopes to reunite with Daisy. He wants to rekindle their love um, and he's hoping that they'll naturally just bump into each other. And since that hasn't happened, he wants Nick to orchestrate a scenario where they'll just happen to bump into each other. And so why does Gatsby stand at the end of the dock reaching towards the green light? It's because it reminds him of Daisy because the green light is at the end of her dock. And so this might help you better understand what the green light might symbolize. What does the color green symbolize? What does the light symbolize? Go ahead and try to figure that on out. And that's it for chapter four. So hopefully this helped you better understand the chapter a little. And I will see you for chapter five. Bye.